If you've tried sauerkraut before, you haven't liked it, try it this way. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pop Keto, where we aim to help you live a sustainable keto and low carb lifestyle. Now, like I was saying, today we are making sauerkraut. Now sauerkraut, not specifically low carb or keto, but the nutrition in it makes it so worth it. And actually during the fermentation process, you actually reduce the amount of sugar in the cabbage. Hey, I wanna say a big thank you to the people who have been tagging us on Instagram. We've really appreciated seeing your photos. We had a friend of the channel called Tom tag us in a picture on Instagram. Tom was having a go at making our carbonara. Uh, I sort of had a bit of back and forth with him and he actually suggested adding a little bit of pepper to it, which I actually think is a really great idea. So thanks Tom for getting in contact with us. Hey, if you do try one of our recipes, we'd love to hear from you. If you put up a picture on Instagram and let's face it, if you don't put a picture on Instagram, have you even cooked? But if you do put the photo up, please tag popketo underscore and we'd love to see what you're doing. Big thank you to all the people who have subscribed to the channel. You can join them by clicking the subscribe button and let's get into it. Now, this is something we eat really regularly, like on a daily, and mainly it's for the nutrition. Now, due to the salt that we use in it, it's got a high sodium content. It's also got a little bit of potassium. It's got vitamin C1. It's got vitamin B16. It is just packed with goodness. It's also good for your gut health. So that's gonna help you digest foods more efficiently and you'll be able to draw more nutrient out of the food as well. Boom, all right, let's get into it. We are starting with one plain white cabbage. I've already given this a rinse. Now what I am going to do is I'm gonna remove some of the outer leaves, which are a little bit brown, a little bit not quite right. So we'll just take them off. Gonna cut off the little butt bit. And what we're wanting to do here is we're wanting to get this cut nice and thin. So we're effectively shredding it. So cutting it into quarters. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut this little core bit out, just like that. And once we've got them out, it's just a case of slicing it as thin as we can. I'm gonna put it on its side like this so it's nice and stable, fingers out of the way, and just start cutting. Towards the end bit, we're just gonna put it on its side and finish it off here. All right, so that's one quarter done. Just gonna chop through the rest of this, won't be a minute. Cool, so that has been one cabbage shredded. You can see there, I've tried to get it as fine as I could get it, and that's probably half the work out of the way. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is add salt to this. So when you're making your sauerkraut, you wanna have about a two to 3% makeup of salt compared to your cabbage. And obviously the best way to do that is by weight. So I am going to weigh the cabbage that we've already chopped. Okay, so that's a 1,092 grams, so just over a kilo of cabbage. So looking at 2% of a kilo is 20 grams. So we're looking at just over 20 grams of sea salt. Now, please be careful when you grab sea salt, you just want salt. Some salts will have things in them to stop them from caking up while they sit on your shelves. This one that we're using today is 100% sea salt with no anti-caking agent, which is exactly what we're looking for. So we're looking at about 22 grams of this salt for that 2%, and you could go up to anywhere up to 3% and it'd still be good. All right, so here's where it gets fun. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to massage the salt into the cabbage. Ideally, if you have a massive bowl, a big salad bowl plate thing, you'd be able to do this in one container. If I tried to do it in this or this alone, I would be spilling cabbage everywhere. So I'm gonna halve it and I'll show you what I'm doing. So with however you manage to get your cabbage together, where it's one massive bowl or as I'm doing it with two smaller bowls, what we're going to do is add one third of this salt into the cabbage. Now this one doesn't have to be that accurate, so you can just do it by eye. And as I said, we are going to massage this salt into the cabbage. Really, it's just a case of squishing it up. The way I do it is I will first do a sort of general massage and go through a lot of the big bits. But once it starts breaking down, I'll sort of find a way to do it methodically so I can make my way through the whole thing. Now, what we're gonna see as we're doing this is we're going to see liquid coming out of the cabbage. Now, just like when we've cooked with courgette in the past and we've put salt in there to help draw the liquid out, it's a similar thing here. But on top of that, the salt is gonna act like a preservative as we're fermenting the cabbage. Now you can see there's already liquid starting to come out. Now we wanna keep all this liquid as well. This is all part of making the sauerkraut. 
Now just to show you a comparison, you can see here, this is the kraut that I have massaged the salt into compared to the cabbage that's not done yet. And you can see there's a lot of liquid coming out of that and it's very, very tender. All right, so making my way through this, and this is the bit that takes a while. And you can see how what was a big bowl of cabbage is now broken down and maybe, maybe a quarter of the bowl now. So we'll add the rest of this back in and we'll keep going. Cool, all right, so that is now done. You can see if I squeeze that, all that liquid is coming out and that's exactly what we wanna see. So next we add in the remainder of the salt that we set aside. Now I also like to add a little bit of flavoring to my sauerkraut and we are going to use some caraway seed and I'm just gonna put in half a tablespoon of caraway seed. I'm gonna give this a bit of a stir and set it aside maybe for about 10 minutes and that'll let the salt just draw a little bit more of that liquid out. Cool, quick tidy up and we'll get into the next part. Once that's done, we are going to put it into our jar for fermenting. Now this is just a glass sealable jar with a clip lid. Nothing fancy, but it is clean. All right, so we're gonna start stuffing this into our jar now. And just get it in there any way you can, really. Making sure you get all the liquid out too. And I'm just gonna press that down like so. And you can see how there's a lot of liquid in there, which is great. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind, while the sauerkraut is fermenting, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the cabbage is covered by the liquid the whole time. So shortly, we're gonna put something in there to weigh it down. So when you're filling your container, make sure there's a lot of space there so that you can put something in there to weigh it down. The other thing that's gonna happen as it's fermenting, it's gonna release gas. It's also helpful to have room up the top for while it's releasing gas so that it is less likely to explode. If you've only got a small amount of space left, all the gas is gonna go into there and it's likely to overpressurize. Whereas if you've got more headroom there, it's not so much gonna happen. Now, as I've said, I have pushed all this down so that I can try and keep it under the liquid. That is gonna be okay as long as I can hold it down. How I like to hold it down is I have just some baking beads and a Ziploc bag. This is not measured, but I'm gonna put in about that much. Suck out as much of the air as I can. And I'm gonna put this into the jar to help weigh it down. See, that is weighing it down there. The liquid is coming up the jar, not when I tilt it, um, but that is gonna do exactly what we need it to do. Seal it up. From here, we are going to put it in a cool, dark place. I'm putting it in our cupboard under the stairs. And for the first two weeks, we're gonna check on it every second day just to burp it and let go of any of those gases that are in there. So literally just going in, opening it up, done. Once that two weeks are done, for the next two weeks, we're just gonna let it sit there. So after two weeks of burping, another two weeks of just sitting there, after that, we'll put it in the fridge and that'll be done. So I'll come back in a couple of days and show you what we're up to. So we are four days in on our little sauerkraut journey. Um, I just thought I'd show you a little bit of this. Um, this is the kraut as it's going so far. Now I've already opened it and closed it. I did it a couple of days ago. I've done it today already. I'm gonna try and do it again just to see if it will um, burp again. All right, so have a little looking here. You can actually see there's all these air bubbles all the way through this, um, which is exactly what we would be expecting to see. And let's see if we get a little bit of a pop. Don't know if you heard that, but it's just a little bit of a... So that is exactly what we wanted to see. Get a little bit of a shake around. It is smelling like it should, and that's it. Open it up, close it, put it back in its cool, dry place, and we'll come back later. 
All right, it is now four weeks later, four weeks since we put this sauerkraut in and I'm really looking forward to showing you what has happened here. Now, when we were putting this together, we used those weighted beads to hold the sauerkraut under the liquid. I've since heard another idea where people have used onion to hold the sauerkraut down. So about two weeks ago, I started another batch of sauerkraut and in that I have chopped up some onions to use to hold down the kraut under the liquids. So that one's actually about, about a week in. So no, it was only a week ago that I did that. So this one was about three weeks when I started this. And so far it's looking okay. We'll let you know how it goes. So with this finalized kraut here, we open it up. I'm just gonna take those weighted beads out. And that smells pretty krauty, which is good. That's what we want. I'm gonna even have a taste of that. Yeah, good. Actually, that's really good. Really happy with that. All right, so for storage, what we're gonna do is we're now gonna put this in the fridge. That'll actually help retard the fermentation process and it'll help it just keep it stable. So I'm gonna load up some of these plastic bags. And the reason for that, again, is so that we can keep it covered uh, in the liquid. We can squeeze the air out of the top of it and seal it. And that's only gonna help keep the kraut under liquid. And like I said, we wanna keep this liquid, so I'm just gonna pour it into these um, bags. Make sure we get all the goodness out. And there we have it, homemade sauerkraut. And honestly, it is so easy, it is so good. It is so good for you as well. Now we generally have a little bit of this with our breakfast most mornings, which is something I did forget to mention in our breakfast episode that we did a couple of videos ago. Now it did take me a while to get used to the taste of sauerkraut, but I have come around to it now. One of the things that helped me initially was to eat it warm. So as I'm cooking my eggs, I've turned the heat off, I, I scrape the eggs out, and just putting a little bit of the pan, and just letting the residual heat of the pan just heat it up a little bit before I put it on the plate helped me really get used to it. But now I eat it like a champ. So I hope you found that useful, guys. This is so tasty, so good for you, and so easy to do. And if you've been enjoying our content, please feel free to subscribe. And if you're not sure yet, have a look at some of our other videos and see what we've been up to. All right, everyone, thanks very much, and we'll see you next week.